So where do electrical components fit in? Now these electrical components are parts you use in electronic projects. Simple enough, right? You use some electrical components to control the flow of electricity such as a dimmer switch that adjusts the brightness of a light. Electricity simply powers other electrical components such as speakers, blasting out sound, still other electronic components called sensors wherein it detects something such as light or heat and then generate a current to do something in a response such as setting an alarm off. In this part, you meet some basic electrical components. Now in the latter chapters, we will be providing much more detail about these components. Electrical components or parts can actually control electricity. For example, a switch connects a light bulb to electric current. Now to disconnect the light bulb and make it go dark, the switch simply makes a break in the circuit. Some parts that control electricity are resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors. Now you can find more information on this on the latter chapters. Controlling electricity even better, or the ICs. Integrated circuits or ICs are components that contain a whole bunch of miniature components such as resistors, transistors, or diodes, which you will hear about in the latter chapter. Now in one device that may not be much bigger than an individual component, because each uh, integrated circuit contains many components, one little IC can do same job as several individual parts. An audio amplifier is one example of an IC. You can use audio amplifier to increase the power of an audio signal, right? For example, if you have a microphone, its small output signal is fed through an audio amplifier to make a strong enough signal to power a speaker. Another type of IC used in electronic projects is a microcontroller, a type of integrated circuit that you can actually program to control cool gadgets like robots. Now we will be discussing more on microcontrollers in the latter chapter. Sensing with sensors. Now when you put light or sound on some electrical parts, they start to make a small electric current. You can use the electricity that is made along with some parts in the previous sections that control electricity. Now to turn on or turn off electrical devices like light bulbs or speakers, motion detectors, light sensors, microphones, and temperature sensors all sends out an electrical signal when they detect a change in the environment such as motion, light, sound, or even temperature respectively. These are, these are signals that can be used to turn on or turn off other things too. Some things might be turned on, some things might be turned off if there is a lot of signal. Now suppose a salesperson walks up to your house and light comes on because of a motion detector or better yet sound a general alarm. Depending on which part is giving them, these signals come in different forms. Might it be a DC or AC? These are two types of signals. Now a microphone gives off an AC signal and a thermometer gives off a DC signal. Now here is a diagram that shows a few signals that you run into often when working with electronics. Now these signals include a plus 5 volt DC signal which produces a high input. A 0 volt DC signal also produces a low input. A 0 to 5 volt DC square wave, the output of an oscillator wherein a device that cycles between high and low voltage. Now if you use this signal as input to light bulb, it causes the light to blink on and off. Then we have negative 5 volt to plus 5 volt AC sine wave. Now this is a signal such as from a microphone that generates alternating current that a device such as an amplifier that uses an input. A microphone generates the wave 4 in this figure. Now when it receives the sound produced by a tuning fork, notice here in this figure that the transitions from plus 5 volts to negative 5 volts are somehow gradual for the sine wave and they are more abrupt in the square wave. Now electricity can power electrical components to produce light, heat, sound, motion, and more. For example, an electric current supplied to a DC motor causes the shaft of the motorcycle to rotate along with anything you've attached to that shaft. 
you can power speakers, light bulbs, LEDs, and motor with electricity. So meaning, um, electricity can be used to run electrical parts that makes light, heat, sound, motion, and other things. So an electric current is, like it said, it can be sent to a DC motorcycle, which makes it, uh, which makes the shaft move, and anything attached to it will move as well. So how does electricity becomes electronics? When you need to use electricity to make something work such as a boombox, you've entered the world of electronic gadgets. No doubt you're eager to start making your own electronic gadgets. We cover the basics of how electronics and gadgets interact in the following chapters. Creating a simple circuit. Now here, you'll be needing a battery, a resistor, an LED, some wires, to put them together and you have a simple electronic circuit. Now that's all an electronic circuit is. Wires connecting components so that a current can flow through the component and back to the source. So as you can see the figure on the right side, it shows a simple circuit wherein you place the parts in this circuit, also called as the components, on something that is called as the breadboard. And we connect those parts with wires. And a breadboard has slots for you to insert electronic components to build a sample circuit. If you're really happy with what you've created, you can then use that design to get a printed circuit board made. Now, as I've shown earlier, that figure earlier um, shows wires connected to both terminals of the battery in the circuit. And this connection or that connection allows the current to flow from the battery through the LED and other components and back to the battery to complete the circuit. Now you can also complete the circuit by connecting parts of the circuit to the metal chassis of a gadget, such as metal housing of a stereo. We call this connection as a ground because it is used as the reference for all voltages in the circuit. Now, ground, as it may sound familiar to you, may or may not be connected to the actual earth, but it is always the reference from which you will measure all other voltages. Now, here is a figure of a schematic, or it is a just a drawing showing how components are connected together by wires. 